Hey folks, welcome back to Coco Rare Coin and Currency. Today we're going to talk about war nickels. And back in 1938, the Jefferson nickel was introduced. On the front, we have a picture of Thomas Jefferson, who was the third president of the United States. On the back, we have a picture of Monticello, uh, which was his home in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, if you know your world history, shortly after the introduction of the 1938 Jefferson Nickel, a couple of folks around the world decided they were going to change the history of the world, and we had World War II. So midway through 1942, it was determined uh, that the actual metal of nickel itself, the actual metal called nickel, is a valuable wartime commodity that can be used for better things other than making change. Okay, um, So the U.S. Mint was tasked by Congress to take the nickel out of the nickel. So at the time, uh, the Jefferson nickel was 75% copper and 25% nickel. So Congress asked them to take the nickel out and redesign the, the metal content of that coin. The issue that the U.S. Mint ran into initially was how are we going to continue to make this coin so that it will work in modern day you know, vending machines and yes, vending machines back then had you know, counterfeit detectors just like they do today. Okay, So the Mint had a little bit of trouble figuring out exactly what metal alloys uh, they were going to use. But what they came up with in the mid-1942 was what we now know as a war nickel. The composition that they settled on was copper, 25% silver, 9% manganese. Okay, so you had a coin predominantly copper with 25% silver, 9% manganese. So these coins were produced mid-1942 uh, until the end of the war in 1945. Um, one of the really unique things about this coin, um, those of you who are, know anything about coins know that a lot of times uh, coins minted in, Phil in, in Philadelphia do not have mint marks. Okay, there, there are exceptions, but generally coins minted in Philadelphia do not have mint marks. However, all of the wartime nickels, um, the mint mark is prominently displayed above the dome of Monticello on the back of the coin. The idea, from what I've gathered, is that they wanted an easy way, after the war was done, to go back through these nickels to, to easily identify which ones are the war nickels that contain silver and which ones aren't. And so by placing a giant mint mark on the back of the coin, it was going to be very, very easy to make that determination. So uh, silver war nickels um, are not rare. Um, they minted about 860 million of them uh, from 42 until 45. Um, a lot of the coins were hoarded. Okay, people knew that these coins uh, were different. They actually felt different. And so if you've, if you've never, you know, I've got a tube of them here. If you've never actually touched a war nickel, um, they feel... Let me turn around here so, so we get Jefferson the right way. There we go. Um, these war nickels feel almost slimy. It's just it's just weird. They don't feel like any coins I've ever felt before. Um, I've been told that the reason that they, they have this weird slimy feel is due to the manganese. That uh, manganese is actually a, a very slippery metal. That gets what I've been told. But if you ever have a chance to you know locate any of these things, you'll notice they just feel totally different. So, um, wartime nickels, what are they worth? What are they worth? Well, if we're talking about from a silver content, um, wartime nickels are worth a little over a dollar a piece uh, when silver is trading $22, $23 an ounce like it is right now. Um, if we're talking about what are these things worth uh, on the numismatic side, they're worth a little bit more than melt, which is about a dollar. But on the numismatic side, um, if you're talking about a mint state coin, you know, high grade MS65, uh, you pretty much name your date and mint mark of your choice. Uh, all of those are going to be readily available, uh, graded uh, 25, 30, maybe 35 bucks a piece. Uh, so that's not a bad deal to have an MS65, uh, you know, Jefferson wartime nickel. Uh, you, can, you can hold it in your hand, you know, certified. That's, you know, about 80 years old. So cool little piece of history right there. Um, I'll be doing another video about using the uh, wartime nickel as a way of silver stacking, which you'll find out I'm not a fan of that. I think there's much better ways to do it. 
But anyways, folks, I appreciate it. Hope you learned something here. If you did, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.